installed a motion sensor at one end of the track and a force sensor at the other end. We have put a trolley onto the track. The trolley is pushed away from the force sensor before hitting it by means of powerful magnets. If there were no magnets, the collision time would be very short, but the heating force would be great. The magnets allow us to increase the time of collision and decrease its power. How are the speed of the trolley, the collision time and the force exerted on the trolley related? Isaac Newton, the great English physicist, was the first to describe this relation. He did it in his famous work called Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Newton realized that the change of impulse of a moving body is determined by the product of force, F, multiplied by the time of its action, delta T. This is the way it's written down mathematically. Delta P equals F by delta T. If the force is constant, the change of impulse evidently equals the area under the force graph. Let's have a look at the graphs related to our experiment. The first graph shows how the collision force changed with time. The area under the force graph equals 0.13 Newton per second. The second graph shows how the trolley's impulse changed. We see that it has changed by 0.12 kg per meter per second. If we took into account the force of friction, the equation would be exact, because Newton per second and kilo per meter per second is the same unit of measurement, recorded in two different ways. In our next experiment, a constant force will affect the trolley. It will be the mass of a small load threaded through a block. The speed of the moving trolley changes evenly, which means that the trolley is moving with constant acceleration. We have already written down Newton's second law as delta P equals F by delta T. Impulse P of a body with mass M equals MV. If the mass does not change, the change of delta P impulse in the first formula occurs through the change of speed. Thus, m by delta v equals f by delta t. Let us transform this equation into f equals m by delta v divided by delta t. But delta v divided by delta t is a body's acceleration. So, Newton's second law may also be stated as force equals body mass multiplied by its acceleration. f equals ma. The greater the force affecting the body, the greater the body's acceleration. Although we have already measured force in newtons, it's only now that we can truly define this physical unit. One newton force is the force which imparts the acceleration of one meter per second in one second to a body which weighs one kilogram. So that if we have standards of mass, distance and time, the unit of force is determined automatically. Let us demonstrate the proportion between force and acceleration in another experiment. A small load has been attached to a force sensor by a spring. A motion sensor has been placed underneath. We reset the force sensor, pull the load down, let it go and register the sensor's readings. Here we see the dependence of force on motion. It is proportional and reverse to the load shift. It presents Cook's law, well known to us. Here is the dependence of force on acceleration. The experiment shows that force is proportional to the load's acceleration. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration. Newton's laws are the basis of physics. The movement of distant space objects follows them just as well as the movement of loads in our experiment. An English poet, Alexander Pope, has expressed the admiration of Newton's genius by his contemporaries in just two lines. Nature and nature's laws lay hidden night. God said, let Newton be, and all was light. <laughs>